It's just, it's just, I don't like who I am anymore. The feelings I have, I mean, does it have something to do with my, the, what I'm involved in now? I mean, what am I missing right now that, you know, we should be talking about? Because I feel like, you know, I, it, it's not a dream anymore. It's turned into a nightmare. I just want to get back. Plays here. Yeah. All three. What about you? Uh, oh, you're just you're just kind of hanging. Yeah. Oh, okay. This is just like a little jazz kit. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Cool. No, I mean, let's see. The vibe of this this kid is it was made after Buddy Rich's. Oh. Excuse me. No. <laughs> yeah, you know Buddy Rich's, right? Yeah. Okay. Well, the, um, I played drums because my mom took me to the mall and I saw Buddy Rich and it was just the sickest thing. You know, I was just like, what the hell is that guy doing? I mean, it was just, he's just like, you know, it was just ridiculous. So DW reissued like the Buddy, the same vibe as what Buddy Rich was using. They wanted it to sound like his. That's why this post is like kind of old school. So this is an old school kit. You know, if you're going to be in this for a while, you just got to learn how to play two and four you know, just like a backbeat. Just like yeah. learn a groove so your pocket, you know, I, I don't know if you've heard these terms, but like yeah. a pocket yeah. is like, yeah. it's basically your feel. It's like what you have to say. And so I fine tuned, like, you know, that groove. That, it's gotta be spot on. So I had to get, I really focused on that before I learned all the chops and stuff. You know, I was explaining it is, a, let's say you have two and four. Yeah. So you got like, you know. <laughs> that determines how that swings is the notes you put or whatever it could be a kick drum so you add, you start adding stuff and you get like swing to it so you got
this all starts from there. the two and four it's just like it's like it's fake it's like a fugazi and that's what i want to get to i want to get back to the two and four the two and four has to be what do you think i mean you know if i can find you know that that center again be like water. I must be like water. Take! No, Brain. You must be like water. I am spiritually bankrupt. I need to find my center again. No, you are spiritually bankrupt, and you need to find your center again. That's Mount Tam right there. You can see it. Yeah, I see it. The hump. That's sick. What? Ah! What? Ah! Like once I went to a small local show. Yeah. In San Lorenzo, where I live. Yeah. There's like these little older guys that play there, and there's like a, like a lot of local bands that play there. And th there's sometimes a lot of people there, but this time there's no one there. Yeah. At least part. And uh, this one guy was uh, playing, and uh, he had a 20 kit with 20 pieces. 20 piece kit with like a thousand symbols that went all over, and he had a gong in the back. <laughs> <laughs> Did he use it? Uh, no, he used probably about a four piece and three right. symbols. But he had all of it to show he off. He had all of it. You, and you try to play something simple, but you can't because you're so distracted because you want to use everything. Yeah, yeah. You get what I'm saying? Well, that's a good point. I mean, because when I was, you know, grow, growing up and, you know, I was into like fusion and, and, you know, I was into Neil Peart. I was into Billy Cobham. So he, he was really just like, <laughs> everything was yeah. like super as fast as you can go yeah. and it's crazy. And you should check him out. Like do a Google search for Billy Cobham. You'll, yeah. you'll freak. First, I played on a pad for three years. Wow. Just a pad. I, I didn't play, I didn't go past a pad. 
got my technique down. Then from there, I moved to kick, snare, hi hat. Are you here for the drum? Yeah, are you John? Uh, no. Uh, <laughs> yeah, is that them? Is that good? Is that bad? Yeah, that's pretty good. Okay. Hey, this is the most of the things you can see in Mac Live. He At least we can like just see them set up. Oh, okay. Let me pull them back. Or we can set them up. Oh, okay. That's yeah. No, I don't like them. Okay. Uh, uh, it's got a seat, huh? Or is this the drum seat? Oh, the seat. Yeah, is that it? Or oh, the, no, no, no. You mean the the seat? Yeah. Oh, the seat. Yeah. Okay, we'll take it. business to take care of. You gonna pull this? Well, I don't really have any money. You don't need money. Use your skills. You got it going on. Make this happen. You gonna make it? Yeah, I can do it. Do your thing. Work it. How many rudiments do you know? I mean, do you know it's not like paradiddles, single stroke rolls, double stroke rolls? Not too many. Okay, well then maybe we should get into that because I could just show you how to do it. I, I, I play a pattern, you know, on my kick drum. So I play like, and they call them ostinatos. 
I don't know if you're familiar with those ostinatos. So that's just like a continually, a continued pa uh, like pattern that just repeats itself. So let's say you took something as simple as like, you know, like a bione rhythm. You know, it's like a Brazilian rhythm. So you took like. Right, and you repeat that over and over again. That becomes like an ostinato, they call it. Your hi-hat was going on two and four, too. Yeah, yeah. Well, I like playing eighth notes on the hi-hat. So I'll play like. A quarter note, not a quarter note. Eighth notes So going. What this is going to do, they call this four way coordination. So, what it's really going to do is it's really going to help your timing because you get into a, like a trance. Because, you know, I just noticed that when you guys were playing, like anytime a fill would come or something, it would really kind of, it would, it, I would kind of just feel like, oh, that was, you, and you would knock it dead sometimes, but sometimes it would be off. So, this is really going to help your timing. And the slower you do it, the better. And actually, as you do it slower, it's, it gets harder. But these kind of techniques are really going to just like help your like, you know, playing so, and your coordination because you're doing two things at once. And then you start moving them, and then you get a whole different thing going on. Do you think if I quit that it would make sense? Well, maybe. I mean, I'm thinking that it would. So maybe that's what I should do. Can, can you tell me what bumblefoot means? I don't get that one. It's kind of just a weird, like, bumblefoot. Cat, dope, stupid, funky, hip hop. single stroke rolls.
get that and you just groove that for and then you can start moving it around to get patterns which I'll get into later but the whole point is that you just want to get so you take out the bass drum and the hi-hat and you just got this just single stroke roll I used to just watch like a whole Super Bowl for two hours while doing that by playing that I would just sit there and just practice And now you can play you can play double stroke rolls. Or you can play like you can play like the, the slower ones, but it's it's the paradiddle and the single stroke rolls seem to work, you know, like the best with the whole thing, because then you can start moving them around. But I'll just show you like once you get that style, once you get this down, which is like That's a paradiddle. Yeah, that's a paradiddle. So you start moving it around, you get. You get that kind of whole feel going with the. Um, you get you get, get different feels going, but if you start accenting, you get. press rolls that kind of stuff so right now what I'm gonna be jamming is pretty much what this but all around the kit so it's like Once you start adding fills and start, once you get that groove down, it's so fun to just start shredding it up with that kind of a feel. And you're really at the same time you're practicing four-way coordination because every limb is doing something different. And then you get faster and you get. similar to who would um like uh old uh, Def Leppard mm -hmm. can you help me <laughs> uh -huh. and yeah. you're a drummer or nice. what, what do you play no you don't no, no. yes a lot of security yes, you do. Yeah. yeah yeah really how many CDs do you have out <laughs> the band I'm in? The band, well, yeah, I don't know, five or six. Wow! Yeah. That would be great, we love How to many see members it. are in your band? That would be great! Uh, like nine, nine members. Wow! Yeah. Wow! You know, the back all men or females yeah. as well? Yeah, they're all men. Is your they're mom going to be at the concert? Band. Yeah. Wow! Yeah, yeah, I'm sweating in here. And I'll show you just appeal to everybody. Yeah. Play it's a manly yeah. men's band. Yeah. Could you sing a little? Give us a little idea of what, what your yeah. sound is. No, I don't yeah. sing or dance. I'm sitting here. Do you have a tour bus? Or do you fly manly to your concerts? Or do you have a tour bus? Uh, you gotta do it Do you sell out most of the time? You gotta do Do you have a lot of groupies that follow you around? The third guitar player, I think he plays rhythm guitar. Or what's his name? Did he wear a hat that looked like Boy George? <laughs> it's just like I'm getting worn out here, I'm getting worn out there. And I just want to, I remember I used to just be able to play without thinking and, and it just seemed free. Am I, am I gonna like, do I have to like fly to this orange light in the sky? Um, are they gonna find me like nude one day? I'm um, just wearing a diaper, you know, like you're wearing a diaper. You okay wearing a diaper?
And then, you know, it's like they're talking about like, you know, vortex shifting and, and flying over stadiums with like, you know, helicopters to, to and, and, and to change the vortex so it, it feels a little better. They're worried about like, you know, is that door cool? So anyways, um, it seems like I'm paying a lot of money and you just don't really care. That there, that through the through this, that not you know that.
You have come for guidance? You seek respite in this harsh world? You've come to the right place. Now let's get busy, bitch. You became a drummer. Good f idea, pal. So you learned your perididdles. If you really need spiritual guidance, I can provide it for you. But you're just gonna have to unplug your ears from all that stupid rock music and have a listen to me. And I was telling you, bitch. rich dad, poor dad. Whoa, dude. Oh, Jesus. You know what I think of drummers? I sh them. I eat them. And I sh them out. When you see a great band playing on stage, do you think they ever f look at the drummer? Jumping through a hoop. One, two, through a hoop. Mitchell just stop. God. Okay. That went horribly wrong. You've chosen.
I mean, I'm scared. I don't really understand, you know, where to go. And, and that's why I'm here. And I was hoping you can give me, you know, the, the answers. <laughs> you added a oh. you know thing because seriously because I've been in sessions yeah. where I'm with producers and they're like no dude just play two and four and I'd be like okay boom bop yeah no dude two yeah. and four just I mean any you know you listen to even like Michael Jackson Billie Jean I mean it's just going boom 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 you know they just want two and four and I've worked with a producer you know that's like you know, work with like heavyweights like that, and they're like, no, dude, we just want two and four. We don't care about those licks. So that's why I'm saying, get that down solid. Then, well, as you start adding stuff, it'll just be flavor. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Yeah. So let me just check yeah. out. That's All right. right. Yeah. Like, I was just listening to what you were saying about like the two and four. Yeah. Like when they want the, doesn't it make it sound less authentic if you hear everybody else is just boom, boom? Doesn't it make it sound like less original? Well, yeah. What I'm getting with the, but what the, what I mean by the feel of the two and four is like, you know, like let's say you're programming two and four and you put the quantize on, like in Reason or whatever, mm -hmm. you know? It's like, well, anybody can just put that quantize. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to get them to like get where does that two and four lay? So, you know what I mean? That's what makes it original. Because it might be a little behind the beat. What's his feel? Where is his? Boom, ba, boom, ba, boom. If I put that in the computer and you put it on like MIDI and you see it might be like, uh, I don't know, 10 cents off from where the actual quantize is of what the computer is thinking. So like the best producers like, you know, the Timberlands, the Dre's and all those guys, they're actually, you know, they don't use the quantize. Or they might quantize the kick drum and then lay the snare in free because that's the only way to distinguish a feel. You know what I mean? Is by, by the two and four is like the foundation of where it lies within the beat. You know what I mean? Because if you notice in the computer, it'll say you, within that quarter note, from right. one quarter note to the next quarter note, mm -hmm. it'll in the computer, like I think logic, there's like 7,000 different places you can put that snare. You can put that beat right before the next beat because it's like the computers are much more like, getting so much better well, if you go back to the older drum machines, like the MPC-60 or the MPC-3000 or whatever, if the quantize, there's only 192 places you can place that. That's why if you listen to like the 3000, opposed to the 60, is the quant, is that the beat, like Dre always uses like the 3000, it's stiffer because it's, he's got 
the computer's faster, and it's more like it, it can't think as fast. So you go back to the older drum machines, and they're lazier. Even their quantizes is lazier. Like Jermaine Dupri, I think, uses the 60, and that quantize is really lazy. You know what I mean? So it's like it, it swings more. His beats will swing. You know what I mean? So it's like, I guess so I'm trying to teach them like the two and four first is because where that feels is what you are about. Because that's where you lay the two and four. That, that is your individuality. I'll, hold you, I'll show you how to hold a stick. You know how to hold one? Okay, so it's, it's going to kind of be an extension of your arm. So right here, your two fingers, your index finger and your thumb. You kind of hold it right there. Yeah, that's it. That's perfect. That's a great grip. Look at that. You already got it. And you're going to hit it like this. Three, four. Can you count like that? Like one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One. We're gonna all start together right there. Okay. So every I'm gonna go, I'm gonna count it and you hit the one. You play so we're gonna start. Yeah. Gonna, I'll count it though. I'll count it all in. We're all gonna come in together. Okay? On the ones I hit on? Yeah, you hit it on the one. I'll count it out at first. I'll go one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and then we're gonna come in. I'll, I'll do one whole round, I'll go now. And you hit it and we all come in together. And I'll do a little pickup into it. So it'll be like this. We're gonna practice right now. One, two, three. You would have went one right on the one. You got that? Can you do that? You say one? Yeah, I'll say one, but I'll do a little fill leading into the one. Okay? You know what I mean? So it'll be like this. One, two, three. And you just hit that one. Okay, forget okay. the fill. The <laughs> fill's too complicated. Okay, no more fill. We're just gonna do one, two, three, four. Three, four, two, three, four, two. Can you count it? If you count, it's easier. So count with me. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four.
Hey, it's Brain. I'm here to see the sugar fragger. <laughs> So, Sugar Fragger, I'm here because uh, I've seemed to lost my way. You know, I don't, I don't know who I am anymore. I mean, should I continue drumming? I'm not sure. I just, I'm not sure if that's where I want to, where I want my life to lead anymore. I'm just, I'm completely lost. Well, 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 I say take the path of the lubricant moose. Seal the quill or the deal. Follow the green road. This you shall see the fling fling pong the cram cram. The sound, you will know it's the path. Next question. What is the answer to the question? They don't ask me any more of those questions, please. Thank you. Here, take my business card. Thank you. And call me on an afternoon. Thank you. You're welcome. You know, I've gone to, you know, the Eastern philosophy, I've gone to the Western philosophy. I've even gone to the Sugar Fragger. I think that if I just, you know, get back to the two and four, you know, that, that center again, I feel so much better. Yes. Hey, thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. I'm back.
songwriting get to the chorus and don't when you're watching a live show make me either want to fight or but when you're sitting down behind a drum set just lock down the tune for all right for the kids little silver lake hipsters come drum fetish kids will walk around the lake i'll pick them up eventually Uh, brain, and I'm talking about some of my drum kits. And that's my drum 
Tech Gersh. Gershy. And uh, as you can tell by the view he's got, he's doing way better than I am. And um, I think I used this kid on the MTV Music Awards. And uh, it was originally supposed to have... It, it had yellow lugs, but we kind of took them off for um, this show. I think the yellow lugs with the red kind of was uh, two McDonald's for Axel. But um, it was originally built uh, based off of... Uh, this Tony Williams kit that I used to, Tony Williams is my favorite drummer and I just loved, you know, the kit he had and he had a yellow kit with red lugs. So I said, can you do the opposite? So they called it the, you know, like opposite Tony kit or something like that. But anyways, uh, it's a 24 inch kick drum, 13, 16, 18, 14 inch snares. And I had a different deeper one on the left just for a different tone. And um, the snare, you know, was is is all DW. Everything's DW on this dog. And uh, those are some, you know, this the uh, all the hardware. I love the nine thousand kick drum pedal and hi hat stands. It's sturdiest for harder playing, which I was doing with guns. And um, that's actually the set list with the tempos because the bass player t Tommy would always yell at me and tell me I play stuff too fast it's just the adrenaline of the show so I'd have a little click track telling me what the tempos were and I'd click them off the right there's jungle at 128 with like some snot or something on the head <laughs> it's pretty funny and the cymbal setup is you know basically pretty simple with that with this kit just kinda a couple crashes all pretty standard I like K's because they're darker. And, um, oh, I had a pang, actually, to the right. A little pang symbol. But, um, you know, it's based off of the bottom kit. Kind of like, you know, simple. Kind of like, you know, meat and potatoes type vibe playing. Whoa. Okay. Now, this is the Timeless Timber kit. This is my studio kit, which uh, you can see I put the logo on myself with the Sharpie. With my left hand, actually, it's pretty, it looks pretty good. But uh, um, this kit is my baby. It's like I use it for all my studio gigs. I use it on that last Vanessa Carlton album. I use it with uh, BT um, and whatever studio gigs I'm doing because it's just it's just so versatile. But this is a little. I think this is kit is the 22 inch. That's uh, kick drum. Uh, 10, 12, 14, 16. And uh, this kit just is sick. I mean, the Timeless Timbers just, you know, it's just like, it's. I think it's the, it was in the, like, some lake for, like, two billion years or something. I don't know. But uh, it's just the finish is this a satin finish, and it's, like, just like a, you know, it's like feels like a baby's butt. It's incredible. Um, I don't know if I should say that. Is that bad to say that? Anyways, um... It's so smooth. It's just, just the finish. I don't like to take this out very much except on, you know, just studio sessions, like I said, and stuff because it's just, it sounds so amazing. And um, I just, and it looks incredible as far as the whole thing. So I just don't like to, it never really play live, it's mainly studio. And uh, I had them do the um, nickel plated, I think it's nickel plated um, hardware. Um, I'm not sure what, I think, uh, yeah, that's a 14 by 14, 16 by 16, I think I did. Um, but, you know, it's mainly for, you know, studio, it's just smaller s sizes, so it just sounds a lot, you know, it punches way better, and basically no one's ever complained about this kit, they just keep asking me to bring it back. It's pretty sick. It's Gersh's dog. Well, look at that chair. Is that cartel? It's pretty good. Um, but like I said, it's been since I've had I've had it for two years, and it's been my main studio kit. And there's the beautiful artwork I put on there. Um, the uh, uh, for for studio, I like to just you know basically use this kind of setup, which is it kind of covers everything, which is two toms in front, two floor toms. You know the and the um. I don't, there's the 9,000 pedal, which I, oh, I like to use the three legs with the 9,000 
I rarely do double bass, so um, the you know three legs really makes it sturdy. I'm always complaining when I get some, and they're the two-legged ones for me because I just like to really pound on the hi hat. So that's why that's the three-legged stand, which I don't know if anybody cares about that. But and this cymbal setup is pretty basic too for studio. I kind of like the same. It seems like I'm always using the same. Oh, those are the new cymbals that Zildjian sent me, which are sick. They sounded incredible. I used them in in the video of the section with Buckethead. Look at that thing. That thing just kills. God, that's nice. I might just set it up and just leave it in the living room. He should just leave it in the living I think he does leave it in the living room just so, you know, people walk in and like, whoa, check that out. Okay, uh, what's this now? Okay, this is... um. My Primus kit that I used with Primus, and man, that looks nice. Um, <laughs> Gersh, dude, was that a new shirt or is that the same one? Anyways, um, as you can see to the left there, I have that gong bass drum that was used for. Um, I had him build it for me because with Primus, there's a song called uh, "Blue Collar Tweakers," and it's got this part where. You know, I, I use that thing where it kind of went down at and that I hit that thing and use that all over the place with Primus. But this is kind of a different, you know, this kit was based off of uh, Terry Bozio's one of his kits that, you know, one of those gigantor kits that he has uh, from DW where it's. Um, oh, and Stuart Copeland sat in a couple times on this kit on the Primus tour. And uh, he really dug it. So um, this kit is based off of uh, that Terry's. Uh, he had this kind of black kit. It was like, I think it's Bird's Eye Maple. And um, I had it done with black lugs. God, that looks cool. Um, I should probably, you know, get a gig in some like, you know, dark metal band or something. It looks, it's got that vibe. But anyways, um. This is, I, st I think this was uh, like 10, 12, 14, 16 also with a 20-inch gong bass drum on the left and a 22 by 14-inch kick because I wanted it shorter, uh, basically based around Stuart Copeland. You know, Stuart like came and produced a couple Primus songs and he said he used a shorter kick drum. Um, so that's what I had built there. So you could see the kind of birch, well, kind of the birch. Um, it's hard to tell. It almost kind of looks metallic in the, what I'm looking at now. But, um, I don't know. It's just, it really sounded great live. And I used it on the album. I used it on Rhinoplasty and Antipop. Those, both those Primus albums, this kit was used on and that the snare i didn't talk about that it's an aluminum five inch five by 14 and that snare is uh, i'm not sure i use that snare on the primus that's new i think um that snare i used with the um timeless timber kit and that was on all over like vanessa carlton and i think i even used that on tom waits um you know tom waits was like you know, hey, man, can you bring some crazy stuff or whatever? And I thought, wow, man, what can you bring for Tom? So I just, you know, it looks kind of old, like somebody made it out of a garbage can or something. So I brought that, and it sounds really crazy. And I used it on some of his stuff, his latest album. And, uh, whoa, they're going quick here. Well, there's Gersh again. And uh, I don't know. I guess that's it. All right. Wait. And what I mean by two and four is, like, just literally... You know, if you're counting like bars, I don't know if you guys read music or anything, but I you do, do a little bit, kind of. Yeah. You know, so if you're like you have a bar four four, yeah. so you know there's there's four quarter notes. Yeah. You can divide those quarter notes any way you want. You know, sixteenth notes, eighth notes. Yeah. So when I say two and four, it's kind of like two and four on the snare, mm -hmm. one and three on the kick drum, mm -hmm. then like eighth notes on the hi hat. Okay. So eighth notes would be one and two and two and four and then. One and three, and the kick will just be one, two, three, four, one, two, and then two and four is just one, two, three, four, one, two, three, exactly. Like that feel, like once you can get that pocket down, then you start adding stuff. Yeah. You know, and I'll teach you what I mean by adding stuff and what makes a swing, what makes the beat swing. You know, because 
The only thing that can make a beat swing is the notes you play in between and how they're like, like I noticed they're using reason over there or whatever. Yeah. Like it's got a little swing on there thing. So it could, you could be like, if you put a 16th note right before the one, so if you got boom, ba, boom, ba, boom, ba, boom, ba, ba, boom, ba, yeah. boom, ba. The only thing that's gonna, yeah, and if you start adding that kind of stuff, the only thing that determines that is what your swing is and how you interpret those notes yeah. to de determine how the beat swings mm -hmm. and what your feel is. So like in Reason, you can like play around with the um, shuffle. Yeah. You know, so if you have, you can make it go faster, so it's like, or that's straight, uh -huh. then it starts to swing. Uh -huh. So it's how you interpret that swing is what determines like how your feel is yes. and why like you get hired or like programmers like mm -hmm. beat makers yeah. you know they got to know this because they got to be like how am I how, how do I want this to feel do I want to lay the snare drum behind the beat put the kick drum ahead of the beat a little bit so like Prince every time he has two and four he'll always like put the snare drum way behind the beat and put the kick drum ahead so it has this kind of quirky little and you're kind of like, whoa, it feels a little awkward. starts from there so you know that's why I was just saying that if you can get that two and four solid mm -hmm. then you start adding stuff that's when like you can because uh, I think the coolest way to approach it is like to show that you got the groove yeah. and then you start going off from there I don't know I just, just, yeah, just want to check out everybody's like two and four and then see what you guys got to add okay. want to go first yeah if I take the same tempo like you know, like one two The thing I was noticing is when you started adding extra notes, yep. you were kind of speeding up. So like what I would do is I would, before you even get into like adding something, I would say just like, just let it sit for a while. So you really feel like boom, got, boom, got, boom, got, boom, got. Like just do it again, but let that go for about, let's say 30 seconds. Then start adding something and really just concentrate, you know, on like the time as you start adding stuff. I don't know if anybody else knows, you know what I mean? You kind of yeah, sped yeah. up. Because once you lock into something, everybody just, they feel it too, and like everybody can feel two and four. Yeah. So it's just like, if you start like wavering off that, people will be like, oh, like it's slipping a little. You know, you just, you know, you, nowadays like everything's determined off of machines yeah. and stuff. So everybody's programming, and a lot of times they use the quantize. So they're used to shit just being, Perfect. Right on. Yeah. yeah, where the old school stuff it wavered, but now it's like really solid. But let me check that out again, but just lock into it for a little bit before you add something. Yeah, just stay right there. Yeah, there it is. Stay right there. I don't know, I mean it felt better to me. I mean the only thing I'd say is as you start doing anything, really think about the time. What I would always hear in my head, do you sing something? I mean, a good thing to do is like, you know, when you're thinking about groove, I'm just talking about groove now and then we'll get into some questions, but when you're thinking about groove, it's like I always sing something. I'll sing like a bass line, a guitar, in, your head. in my head. So when you're going, you know, any kind of weird like licks or anything like that, mm -hmm. you're really hearing like just, you know, I'm still hearing, you know, some kind of like pulse, either whether it be a shaker going, so 
so you just never you never get off. Well, I get you know. I mean, I guess the reason why I'm talking about like the two and fours because when my teacher told me that, I thought like, ah, dude, come on, man. You know, I want a solo. Yeah. But I swear, the reason I'm still you know I'm like 40 years old right now and I'm wow. still playing drums and making a living out of it, not a bad one. So, I just I'm just trying to teach you like what got you know what I mean with like if you want to do it for real, you like you know the. That's all people, you know, want to get into is the time, you know, timing yeah. your, and your feel. Like what dictates what your vibe is. You know what I mean? They want to hire you for your feel and what your thing is. Like as soon as he played, I knew, you know, I knew it was someone different than you. Mm -hmm. So just perfecting like where you feel things and stuff like that, you know. What you I was noticing mainly is just like, you know, when you start going off, I lose like, you know, what that feel is and what your vibe is. And then, if, you know, if, if you lose that, you know what I mean? It's just like. Yeah, I mean, you know, just then and, and the spacing of the beats and how you interpret it or whatever. So, but you want to play? Okay, so again, like, you know, like right off what I noticed when you started, mm -hmm. it was like you started adding stuff right away. And, and like, and then it became, became like you're, you're just adding, adding stuff, stuff all the time instead of kind of going what I was suggesting, like, you know, lay it down solid. Then when you do something, you know what I mean, show it off and go back to the groove. Because after a while, it just starts to sound like, oh, somebody's just digga digga psh, digga digga psh, digga digga digga. Because we're talking groove here. I'm just saying, like, what groove is, you know what I mean? So, like, lay down, there's this drummer that plays, um, his name's Dennis Chambers. I don't know if you know who Yeah, I mean, he's my hero, right? And so, his, that's his vibe. I got it from him, because I took some lessons, you know, and just like, his vibe is like, He'll lay down a groove, just the simplest thing, and then he'll do a lick that you're just like, what the? You know, like that just blew me out. Then he slips right back into the groove, and then you're just like, wow. You know, then it meant something. So I'd say right now, really quick, just do, do the same thing like he did. Just like lay the beat down, do something, then bring the beat back. Do something, then bring the beat back. You know, you know what I mean? Yeah. Just practice that for a second. Like it, it could be any lick you want, but instead of continuing the lick, like just bring it back to the two and four. So it's like, oh, he did something. Now he's bringing it back because that's how you might set up a chorus, you know, a bridge to a song. So like you got your beat going, you're jamming, you do your fill. Could be some fancy kind of vibe. Then you like, okay, now you're in the ride. Now they're in the chorus of the song. And you do something fancy. You come back instead of just like kind of flailing like that's sort of like kind of like almost like regimental type of thinking i think just it just makes it more it's just like that's what i'm always thinking when i'm like playing you know i'm always thinking of like form and like okay i'm going to do something now and then i'm going to bring it back then i'm going to do something and then i'm going to go to the ride then i'm going to do something and then come back instead of just like you're always just kind of it's just like drums to me has got to be like a pulse. It can't, you know, it's like there's certain things where you might do stuff that needs to be a part that you're like, you know, that, that has like intricate patterns. But then I would always keep that solid too, you know what I mean? And then do something and come back to that. But right now we're just talking about two and four, mm -hmm. doing something, come back to the two and four. Just practice, let me just see how your timing is when you do that. Okay. Instead of that two and four for a second, like right away I noticed you added a, you know, thing because seriously, because I've been in sessions yeah. where I'm with producers and they're like, "No, dude, just play two and four. And I'd be like, "Okay, boom, pop." Yeah. No, dude, two and four. Just. I mean, any you know, you listen to even like Michael Jackson, Billy Jean. I mean, it's just going boom, 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 boom. You know, they just want two and four. And I get that down solid, 
Then, as you start adding stuff, it'll just be flavor, you know? to that just two and four that was it to me i swear dude that sounded tighter just in general as a feel you know what i mean mm -hmm. i mean I, you know, I hope i'm not like you know wearing you guys out with this but i'm just trying to just show you that i swear you know that's what got yeah. me every gig i got is i first i go in there and i just lay it down then if they want me to show off yeah i could solo like a maniac but before you know they just bef that's what like right there to me was a better feel yeah. and then you started adding licks they were more solid Cause you just, I could just tell you were just like laying it down more instead of just kind of floating or whatever. Mm -hmm. But the, yeah, that was good. I mean, just think about that as you know, as a way of going back and forth. But let me check out you before. Right away, did you notice the difference in like feel from your feel or whatever? Like his feel was a lot, even though it was kind of like the same tempo. Yeah. Your feel was a lot more like laid back. Yeah. You know, your hi hat was lazier. Yeah. You know what I mean? So even you know when when he was talking about well, it's just two and four. You know, really, I noticed the difference right away, and just mm -hmm. the you know, not that anyone's bad, worse. It's just more like your that's your personality. You know what I mean? It was just a little more like. You had, you know, it was swing. I can tell like you were swinging in your head yeah. more than you were like, you know, like so the licks you were doing yeah. and stuff were kind of just like swinging. You know what I mean? As far as like, you know, technique, yeah. as far as like holding the stick, because mm -hmm. I noticed. Let me see how you're, because you know, you, you get better tone and stuff when yes. determining. His his technique was, uh, you know, pretty good as far as like where he holds. You know, like the fulcrum, like would be there. I noticed yours was kind of more like this. You know, you're kind of doing this thing like this or whatever. But the way that I found that you can get the most snap and stuff out of your head is like if it's an extension of your arm. So instead of like this, kind of like so it's like, you know, it's like, this, like an extension of your arm, you know, like holding it out like that. You kind of had that. Yeah, you kind of had it more like this. So while you were playing, you know what I mean? It had a better, it just, I, I find in the end, like, I noticed that you, you know, were kind of like this too. But my teacher right away said like, you know, like keeping it like this, as an extension of your arm, and this kind of lays right, right there, like in between. You know, this is the fulcrum. Yeah, like that. More than like this. I notice especially you. Like right now, I'm gonna just do like single stroke rolls, like. Right, and that's double. Right. That's better. See how that's more. Then, yeah, I just noticed when you're playing, you're kind of playing like this. You know, and like if you just start getting used to it being an exact extension of your arm, because then when you're playing, wherever your arm goes, it's just kind of like that's what, instead of like this, it just starts to get like, it just looks, especially looks wise too, it starts to look sloppier, 
you know, when it's an extension of your arm, it's definitely like more solid. How long do you take lessons for? Uh, I took lessons for about 10 years, you know, just like off and on. Like I said, you know, I started just on a pad for about three years, <laughs> you know, just practicing, you know, and just like, you know, just like tech, all those, just practicing like that on a pad just the whole time. And then, then I got into, like I said, kick and snare, practicing, you know, the two and four, ACDC, just, or R&B, just any, you know, rock, I was listening to ACDC because it's just so, you know, doom, ba, doom, ba, you know, it's like just that pulse. Or I'd just like put on some like R&B radio, play all the like, you know, this like the, you know, like that kind of like really like, You know, just like really slow, just like, you know, really just, you know. Like that's the simplest beat you can play, but to me it's the hardest, just going. You know, because it's gotta be, if you waver a second, everybody hears it. Yeah. When, you know, when you're doing the jam and stuff, it doesn't really matter. But, um, so you know, I just got into that, but I, I took lessons from the very beginning. What do you do to practice now? Um, now I just play. You just play? Yeah. Because, you know, I, I was, like, practicing so much that my teacher was like, dude, just get in a band and play. So the reason why I'm showing you this Bayonne and Samba is because that's how I learned to play. I joined a Brazilian Samba band and went to Japan for a year, and we played four shows a night, seven days a week, playing those kind of rhythms and doing that kind of stuff. So... You know, that's that's how I learned how to play. Is you know, I just like joined a band or whatever. What do you think about posture when you're joining? Yeah, well, yeah, my posture is horrible. You know, or whatever. I mean, it's like because I'm always just kind of going for it. You know, I'm always leaned over or whatever like that. But you know, what what the way I like to to I think you know a lot of people say, oh, you know, set up your drums a certain way to make it so it's like easier to play. But I think you know what makes like you know, the individuality is like, you know, having a vibe. Like sometimes I like spend hours just looking at my kit. How am I gonna set it up for this show? Or I'm joining this new band. What do I wanna say with the way it looks? You know, so I'll just totally like sit there for hours and set it up, then I'll get used to it. Because I think it's important. I think if everybody had a generic kit, then everybody would be like, well, what, you know, like, like you said about Neil Peart, he has his vibe and it works for what he does. As long as you know you're not doing something totally out of the ordinary and it's gonna screw you up completely, you know. But in general, I like to have you know this at pretty much you know parallel. Uh, I don't like uh, like I don't usually sit high enough to where I'm like you know I've seen dudes play ska music or you know just like weird. This guy I think it was the guy in the Stray Cats and he was literally like sitting this high playing, almost standing up. Wow. And he was ripping it up. So, you know, I mean, it was just like, whatever. He's got his vibe. So, it was, you know, he was doing it. But I usually just say, you know, I think that if, like, you know, I, I try to, because my uh, spine was getting messed up, because I was actually, I like to have my snare kind of angled, and I was always playing like this. So my oh. spine was kind of curving. And my doctor was like, dude, you got to, like, sit up straight. So, I don't know. I mean, as long as, you know, your legs are, like, kind of parallel to the ground, and you're kind of standing there. Wherever everything else is set up, I just, you know, kind of say go for it. Do you guys know how to tune? Mm -hmm. yeah. how, how do you do it? So what, what, what is, let's say this, like you were going to put this head on. Well, you, what, what, what would you do first? First of all, I would, I would get it set up and then I would, you know, you tighten it to a certain point before you have to actually have to start, you know, screwing it on. Yeah. Until they're all even. So you do it with your hands. That's no, I, I have a jump. Oh, to that point with my hands, yeah. Yeah. What I will and then get a drum key and then do it opposite sides. Yeah. So it goes on evenly. So what and then fine tune by putting this in the middle and going around. Yeah, just putting a little pressure on the drum. So let me take it back and then I'll just, you know, so so what well first of all, I get the drum head and I crack the edges. Yeah, that's true. Like some people put set it on paint buckets after they put it on the drum and they put it at, like natural yeah, I usually just stand on so it. You just stand on yeah. it. Are you serious? <laughs> yeah, you know, I mean, it's, it's a drum. Mean... It's supposed to be, yeah. But no, I, I usually, but before I even do that, yeah. I take the physical head, I hold yes. it, uh -huh. 
and you just crunch the edges. Okay. Because really, that's gonna make or break right. how, how fine, you know, the two. I mean, how like good the head is or yeah. whatever. Because you'll hear it crack yes. as you go around. It'll go. Uh huh. Yeah. I work it for like three or four minutes, and I and then I get it and I just like this is the head without the drum. You know, and I'm doing yeah. this to it. I'm like. And we're cracking the edges, you know, but this is it right here. And I get it to where it's just like, it feels like, okay, I've worked this thing. It's like, you know, before you're like gonna cook a piece of meat or something and you're hitting yeah. it with a hammer, you yeah. know, like you're tenderizing it. Yes. And then I put it on and I, I always put my, pretty much put, it seems like it works the best, is, you know, putting the logo on the top of where you're yeah. gonna play it. I mean, it just bugs the hell out of me when somebody, I go to a guy's drum set and it's like over here or something. <laughs> it's just like, what the hell? But so anyways, I kind of put it like, you know, always facing, you know, oh, like where, where I'm gonna like play, you know, like, yes. or whatever. So this, this one right now is a little off because I think I had it over there, but usually I put it like right there on that lug. Just for some reason, I don't know, that's, that's just a tradition for me. But then I always tighten it by hand all the way around, just like this. Mm -hmm. You know, go all the way around. And like you were saying, you know, after that's tight, then I work it again oh, before yeah. with my hands. You know, I just keep working it because that's just gonna make it like, that just, it just feels like, you know, like it needs to sit in a certain spot. And if these things, if, if the, the edge of the head isn't completely flush around the, the uh, actual um, bearing edge, yes. you know, it's just, you're going to hear, it's going to sound like a football or it's going to go boom. Yeah. Or boom, yeah. it's going to go up or down the tone. Yes. But so anyways, I guess once I, once I tighten it with my hands, then I work it again, then you'll notice you can tighten it again. So I do it again, you know, keep doing it until I can't do it anymore. You'll notice that you keep doing it and you can't do it anymore. Yeah. Then I do what you say, you know, I do like a, maybe a quarter turn, quarter turn, opposite, opposite sides, yeah. quarter turn, quarter turn, quarter turn, quarter turn, hit it, you know, whatever, quarter turn, do it until, I think every drum has a sweet spot. Yes. I think every drum is different. And so I think it's like, you'll find where this drum's gonna sing. Like where it just boom, and you're just like, man, that's bad. That's where it should sit. Yeah. And then as you start tuning it up, you'll notice you're choking it. Yes. And as you start tuning it down, you notice it'll start flapping. Yeah. So I think the most important thing is like what you were saying, once you get it tight and whatever, instead of just hitting it till you think it sounds good, I mean, hit it to where you think it sounds good, but then tune it up some more. You know what I mean? Right. Tune it up and hit it and go, oh, that doesn't sound right. Uh -huh. Go back down. Then tune it down you'll find that sweet spot. And what I've noticed that after I start doing that and know where that sweet spot is, I just notice that that's just where I can, I, I, I know the feel of the drum and I can do it every time. So, I mean, that, you know, you, you pretty much seem like you guys all know how to do that. But what I've noticed is that getting it higher than I think it is, when, when I know it sounds good, so I know that's the sweet spot, and then lowering it and bringing it back up really seemed to help me to find out where that's where that drum should be. Because you know, it's just like it only sounds to me. It sounds really good in one spot, and that's just where I always, I always tune. And people are like, "Oh, I tune my drums really high," and I'm like, "Well, what do you mean?" You know, and they'll be like, "Oh, I just crank them until they're like all like timbales," and I'm like, "Well, yeah, I can turn this drum up to where it's just going, you know, it sounds like a timbale, yeah. but that's not where it's supposed to be." So I just, be, I let the, I kind of look at the drum and I say, "Okay, dude, this is where you sound the best." and that's just what this drum set sounds like, and I leave it. And I, if I want a higher pitch drum, I'll go get a birch kit, yeah. and I'll get higher pitch drums or something. Yeah. Instead of choking the drum, you know, yeah. it just feels good in a certain spot. Yeah. Um, when you're playing with Primus or Guns N' Roses, how much do you, when you work in, do you work in paradiddles and you know, all that kind of technique stuff you're showing when you're playing with them? Well, what I've learned in any time I'm playing or I'm on stage, I don't think about anything except just the music. So, you know, it's like to answer your question, those practicing those things, I don't think about that when I'm playing with him at all. Not even for a second. Because I, was, I practice those things, they just kind of go to that. But when I'm doing that, I'm not thinking of those patterns ever. Or whatever. You know what I'm saying? So it comes like, out. It just comes out. So it's kind of like learn it, use it, and then lose it. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's just kind of like you just, I don't think about it at all. I just try to just, you know just go for it or whatever. But I'm listening to the music. I mean, you know, like, I, I listen to like, well, what is the bass player playing? Where is he putting the beat? You know, I, I kind of look at it as, you know, like, 
you know, I saw that cat in their programming, like the same way as programming. You know, I'm, I'm just like, okay, what's the bass doing? Well, what, what do I want the kick drum to do here? Like, I don't just start jamming. Like, you know what I mean? I, I, I listen to like, okay, the bass is playing that, okay. Hmm, you know, what, what am I, fe you know, because I'm, I'm thinking like, well, what's going to sound good against, I try to like, you know, think about it in terms of like, you know, well, th if this guy's playing this, what am I going to play? And, I, and then once I hear that, I just let go. I never think like, okay, I practiced the biome today. I'm going to use that because I know it. It's just like what feels right. And I've been on gigs where I'm kind of stuck. You know, I'm just like, man, what the hell am I going to do? You know, like this guy's playing this thing. They're all waiting for me or looking. And as soon as I just say, F it, and I just let go, the most natural thing always seems to be, you know, once I get out of my head and start stop thinking about like, okay, I got to do this or I got to do that or this is the way I got to play this and just go for it, it seems to always work, you know what I mean? And then I know that, okay, all the stuff I practiced helped, but it's not here right now. I'm not thinking like this is what I'm going to do right now or whatever. And I'm really thinking about just grooving it, you know what I mean? Just laying it down at first. Like just, you know, when I'm in doubt, I just play two and four. And then it seems like everybody kind of picks up. Then I start adding little things. From there, you might think of like, okay, maybe I'll add this with this and this, and it becomes this intricate beat, which is your own beat and your own personality. But it can't, But I started from, because I don't know what else to play right now. Okay, well, that's kind of cool. You know, oh yeah, that guy's vibing off that, and that becomes the pattern. But it always started from just like grooving it. I guess I was just starting from the basic thing, because that's what my teacher taught me, and I just realized that, you know, I'm still here playing. Like the phone hasn't stopped ringing, and I'm wondering why. I'm thinking, oh, maybe it's because I play two and four solid. <laughs> you know, and then the rest just kind of, you know, whatever. So. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Dude, this is like going into hell. <laughs> oh, no. No, I can't get it. <laughs> oh, dude, we're in trouble. <laughs> Did you see that vibe, dude? Yeah. trouble. We, we show up with an ambulance. That's how, that's how hardcore yeah, we are. Yeah, someone's going to need me. Even, even George Bush doesn't arrive with an ambulance. Hey, dude, dude, dude. Go ahead, go, go, go. We drove this. Okay, everybody out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is so awesome. Seriously? <laughs> that would be awesome. Wait, why didn't you guys just... Okay. <laughs> That's funny. Oh, man! <laughs> <laughs> My expensive bag falls out. God, I hate this shit. The shoes are getting dirty. I want my mom. Oh. Right? You really didn't get it before? I need a marker. I think if we get it, I will. Give me money. I'll get it right now. I don't have any money. <laughs> we gotta get it. Dude. You told me earlier, just like I can do it now. Oh, where, where's production? Oh, yeah. yeah. What then are you in? Uh, cheap drinks. Yeah. Nah. <laughs> What's the then? Cheap drinks? Yeah. No, it's certainly safe. Yeah. yeah. And I don't know. <laughs> Those guys are roast. No. You're not, not Axel Rose, you're not Slash. Well, yeah, but they got other people in the band. Yeah, I know. What is it? There's only two people in the, in no, the band? No, that's not the other. Slash is no longer in the band. <laughs> slash and Axel, yeah, there's only two people. <laughs> <laughs> It's not a dream anymore. It's turned into a nightmare. You know, without the two and four, it's just like, it's like it's fake. It's like a fugazi. I mean... No brain. Tight! A thousand symbols that went all over and hit a gong in the back. Okay, we'll take it. How many rudiments do you know? Continually pattern that just repeats itself. How many rudiments do you know? Can, can you tell me what Bumblefoot means?
Like, do I have to like fly? It seems like I'm paying a lot of money and you just don't really care. Jumping through a hoop. One, two, through a hoop. Mitchell just stop. The sound, you will know it's the path. Here, take my business card. Thank you. <laughs> That's what was in here until a little while ago. Notice how the dirt is already staining the snow. Man, the smell in here is pretty intense. Christmas Eve. And that's that. You're down. You think you're down and then you open another door. This lady probably thinks she's talking to myself. She's right. All right.
I don't like who I am anymore. 